What's up guys? We are making the final push to get the last of the pieces that we need for this truck. There's just a few key components we're missing, plus uh, there's a lot of labor once we get a tube, and tube bending and stuff like that. But mechanically, we're going to go grab a couple things. So I did pick up something this weekend and uh, let me show you what we got. So I started looking for used winches online. Uh, Marketplace had almost nothing. So I started asking around local four wheel drive groups on Facebook if they had anything. And this guy chimed up and he said he had a 12,000 pound rough country winch. So this is what we got. We picked it up. Now I'll say right now, this winch I don't think is going on this truck, even though I need a winch for this truck. Because I got this for so cheap, <laughs> like dirt cheap, this is probably gonna go on the Jeep because this isn't as good a winch as I wanna put on this truck. Now I'm not gonna buy a real high-end winch for the truck, I'm not buying a Warren or something fancy, but I do wanna get the uh, Badlands Apex 12,000 pounder that everybody uses, everybody on YouTube uses them, you've seen them everywhere, they're tried, they're true, and they're pretty cheap. So we're gonna grab one of those to get on this truck, but I gotta go to Harbor Freight to buy that still. But the Jeep does need a winch and it's been on the back of my mind forever. So it is nice getting this out of the way. Now this is actually a really cool deal because it was so cheap. These are extremely cheap winches. Um, these are some of the cheapest ones you can buy. They are Chinese made. At least this one has some sort of a name brand on it versus some of the really cheap Chinese stuff that you see on you know, Amazon or whatever. So for the Jeep, this will be perfect. Plus it is a 12,000 pound winch, which is overkill for the Jeep, but these winches aren't as heavy as some of the you know actual good 12,000 pounders this thing is supposed to weigh like 64 pounds or something like that right around 60 to 65 pounds which is right on par with what I should be getting on that Jeep was like a 9500 so anyways this will be a little overkill which is good but it felt really good getting this out of the way and you will notice it has synthetic line which is cool I've never had synthetic line on a winch well I never really owned a good winch before anyways I owned a Quadratech branded one years ago I had it on my little Cherokee but I never even wired it up it was just mounted on there and then I sold the Jeep before I ever hooked it up but we got the nice lightweight synthetic line. All right, so I went ahead and I separated the winch from the plate. Now, I guess we'll just be straight up here and say I paid $150 for this whole setup. Pin at the wire, the plate, everything. Couldn't pass that deal up. Even for a cheap, crappy winch, I'm gonna do it. Now, I'm really surprised because the advertised weight on this thing on their websites is like 64 pounds, I think, or 67. I threw it on the scale here. I don't know if you can read through the wires there. It won't focus in. This thing's weighing in at about 62 pounds with cable and everything on it. I mean, you take off all this heavy cable, even with the fair lead on there, now we're only weighing about 55 pounds. So that's actually really surprising. So this is actually gonna be a really good winch for the Jeep because it is lighter than I expected. And I wanted lightweight on the Jeep because I don't wanna add a lot of weight. So, perfect. And one of the cool things was that it actually came with one of these receiver mounts, which I'm not gonna use the receiver mount, obviously. I might actually be able to cut up and use the mounting plate and, you know, with the fair lead and all that stuff. I can probably use that on this truck when I build a bumper for it. So that's actually pretty cool. We might actually, uh, might actually save a couple bucks being able to use that stuff. But come on, 150 bucks. I mean, those plates alone cost 75 bucks new. And then the winch itself, they sell those for about 450 by themselves new. So I couldn't pass it up. Let's go. We still need to buy a winch for this. But I'm gonna be heading out in just a few minutes. We're actually headed over to California, going over to Auburn. We are going to hit up WFO Concepts. Uh, they're an off-road shop. I've seen the name everywhere before, but I've never really looked at them, to be honest. I never really paid attention to them. And, uh, well, I just happened to run across a guy that works there, and he's selling a part that we need for this truck that's directly for this truck. It's not a winch. It's actually kind of cooler, I think. We're going to grab that, and uh, I will tell you what that is later. So first off, let's get over there. And we are back. I'm tired. Jeez, it's been a long day. We took off about 10 o'clock. We got out there, went out to Auburn, California. We went to WFO Concepts and we picked up the goods that are behind me. So let me show you what we got. So first off was the main reason I went out there. So I contacted a guy off Facebook Marketplace and he had a Detroit locker for a Dana 60, 456 up in gears, uh, 35 spline, it's perfect for my truck. So he had one on there, and so I was like, sure, I'll take it, I'll drive out there, and we'll grab it, 
And when he gave me the address, he said he was going to take it to work with him. He gave me the address, and it was for WFO Concepts, which is a very cool off-road shop. If you've uh, followed around the off-road community, you've probably seen or heard of them. So I went and got this off of him. This is a used unit. It's got maybe 1,200 miles on it, he says. He threw it in his uh, in the front of his actual forerunner that had a... Uh, uh, Dana 60 front end under it and uh, he came across something that he just couldn't pass up it was a selectable locker of some sort so he ended up putting that in took this back out and sold it for cheap so I got it I got it for for a very good deal especially since it's I mean I'm gonna call this pretty much new <laughs> I don't think it got beat on or anything. I don't know. The truck looked really nice, man. I saw that build. That was a beautiful, beautiful built truck. So this is what we got. We got a Detroit locker for the front axle of the truck. Uh, as you know, the front end is open still. This has the military axles in it. So it has a Detroit in the rear already. So it's kind of cool that it has, you know, Detroit's front and rear. I don't have any mismatched stuff. So it's kind of easier to say it's just Detroit's front and rear. <laughs> But I really wanted a Detroit or just a basic locker. I like the simplicity of it. I didn't want to deal with selectable lockers. And, you know, you do run into issues with those, you know, airlines or electrical issues and different things like that. So it was really nice just to keep it simple, which has kind of been my theme on this entire truck is just keeping things simple. Now, since I was out there and I was like, oh, you work for WFO. Okay, let me jump on their website and see what I need. <laughs> I ended up buying their torque arm kit. So this is an arm. This is basically a big triangulated arm that's going to weld to the axle and it's gonna go all the way up to the front to, towards the um, front of the rear drive shaft with a shackle. And that'll keep my uh, rear axle from axle hopping, twisting. It'll, it'll keep those springs a little happier because this thing, does get a lot of axle hop. You know, I probably shouldn't do burnouts in it, but you know, when you spin the tires, the it it, it moves a lot. And then when I flex it out, I kind of notice like the front of the spring is is essing up a lot more than the rear, so it's kind of S shaped. So this arm will help that a lot. It'll weld the rear. It'll triangulate all the way up to the middle here, and it'll have a shackle in there to allow for as much suspension travel. So it shouldn't limit any suspension travel. Maybe a hair, I don't, it really shouldn't do any, but it'll eliminate any twist of that axle. And this is a really nice kit. These are some super high quality parts. So I kind of assembled it, it came in pieces, but I, I kind of threw it together just to see. This is the, basically the frame mount side. This will mount up to a cross member that I might have to make. These are the brackets that will mount to the axle itself. These weld onto the axle. These are little brace brackets that kind of go in there all the way around. It's got one that's got a nice WFO logo. That one's gonna go right up here. All that will get welded up solid on the axle itself. It's got really nice bushings for, uh, you know, vibration and and whatnot, and we got a couple heim joints. So the way this is gonna work is, this goes on the axle like this. Imagine that being the axle. <laughs> Balance. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have one big tube, it's gonna have a two inch quarter wall tube that's gonna go from here, it's gonna be welded to this sleeve. That tube will go all the way up here and it'll be welded to this threaded adapter. Then the top will have a one and a half inch quarter wall tube going from here, welded to this sleeve, all the way down to the lower bar. And this will actually weld to the lower bar with these two little brackets. And that bar will also be welded in here. So everything will be adjustable for length so that we can fine tune what we need to make this thing fit in there right. And it's, I mean, they've got all the hard work done, all the cutting, all the brackets look super nice. Super high quality. All I have to do is basically start mocking it up, tack weld everything in. I do have to buy tube. I opted not to buy their tube. Um, it's a little expensive. So since I am actually waiting on tube bending equipment and all this stuff, I'm gonna end up having to buy a bunch of tube anyway, so I can you know I can get it cheaper myself. So we'll we'll go that route. I'll just, all I have to do is buy tube, <laughs> and this kit is complete. And all it's gonna take is basically welding this in, cut my tube to length. I can try out my new notcher using these and uh, get everything tacked up, welded in, get everything adjusted, and that'll be perfect. The most fabrication I'm gonna have to do is actually building a cross member for the shackle to mount to. 
So I'm gonna have to find out exactly where I wanna put it underneath the frame of this thing and uh, really make it work right. So I haven't done any research on this, just what I've seen over the years. Um, I wanna say your forward mount is supposed to be basically exactly in line with your forward uh, drive shaft joint, basically. That's a long ways though. <laughs> I was measuring this thing out. That's like six, almost seven feet going from way back here all along the drive shaft, all the way up here. I have a long drive shaft, not gonna lie. If it's supposed to be that long, then that's what we'll just do. <laughs> but that's gonna require me to build a cross member somewhere up there, somehow, some way. I think we're also gonna have to move our exhaust. Our exhaust looks like it's gonna be, uh, it's running real close here. I think we're gonna end up running right through that. So we're probably gonna have to move this exhaust, which is perfect because I have different mufflers I want to put on this thing anyway. So it's it's like everything's just like coming together for a reason, you know? It's like, well, you have to do this, but since you're in there, you might as well do this other thing that you're already planning on doing. <laughs> just making more work for myself. I'm happy with it. It's going to be cool. This is going to be really sick. We're going to have this huge like ladder style bar running the length of the drive shaft. It's going to actually might help protect the drive shaft a little bit depending on you know where where it hangs but i think it's gonna work really good so now we got our torque arm kit um something i really wasn't planning on doing right away it's just an opportunity that popped up so i bought it but it's something we need to do eventually we got our front locker we have a winch for the jeep which is kind of part of my plan uh we still have to buy another winch for the truck oh, i got hiccups right now we're still waiting on a tube bender to show up i have like a bunch of parts, I have dies, I have the notcher, I have all this crazy stuff, but I'm waiting on the bender. There's a shortage of uh, the cylinders, the hydraulic cylinders apparently from JD squared. So we're waiting on that. Who knows how long it's gonna be, but that sh I believe that's already paid for. I think they've already charged me for that. So that's good. And then the next big thing I gotta buy besides another winch is a bunch of tube. I gotta buy a ton of tubing for this thing. So we're gonna be doing bumpers, sliders, more bumpers, getting into some roll cage stuff, Bed Kate, we're, we're gonna be doing everything. I can't wait. 